tacos, burritos, quesadillas. What we know as Mexican food is only a small part of one of the world's great cuisines. It's vibrant, delicious and fun. Mexico, wow, well, you've got all kinds of chilies and you've got beans and there's garlic and there's spices. It is a world-class cuisine that you could spend many years exploring and not be done with. Oh, Rafael Nazario has written extensively on Mexican cuisine, worked as a chef in Mexico for many years, and has now opened Australia's first taqueria, which he says will change people's minds about what constitutes Mexican food. Rafael, if I'm starting a Mexican pantry, what do I need? You need, for example, tomatillo. Tomatillo is actually, it, it looks like it says tomato, and a lot of people think it's a relative of tomato because it looks like a green tomato. Mm. But in fact, it's a member of the gooseberry family. They're very, very tart, essential. Can't do Mexican food without tomatillos. Used in salsas, used to cook stews, used to make anything green, it usually has tomatillo and coriander in it. So then we come to the beans. The most two common types are the pinto and the black bean. Mm. Okay, these are known here as black turtle beans. This is what they make refried beans with. Here's what, something that's very common all over Mexico: nopales. These are called nopalitos because they've been cut into strips. Nopal is cactus, and they can grill them. You can make a cactus salsa. It's very, very good for you. It's uh, it's considered very, very healthy. And what's a cactus taste like? It tastes like aloe vera. Huitlacoche is a type of fungus that attacks corn. Mm. It starts growing out of the side in this sort of black, you know. Wow. It looks weird. It but looks, it tastes great. Oh, huh? it tastes great. It has a very, very unique flavor. Very delicious. Wow. Pozole. The reason it says maiz blanco means white corn, mm. hominy is a type of corn. Mm. And the corn is put in a lime solution that makes it puff up. And then it gets stewed, and that becomes a dish called pozole and it's, uh, pozole is a ritual. It is akin to going to a Vietnamese restaurant and having a fall. Flavored chocolate is very common in Mexico. This has cinnamon, almond, clove. You can make a, a hot cocoa mm. with it. Sometimes I can smell it the spices yeah. in that. Yeah, it doesn't smell like straight up chocolate, no. does it? No. This is anato, and anato is achiote in Spanish, and it grows in trees. You know, it's a little red seed, and it was originally used also to paint to dye cloth, mm. it dyes the food. It's also known as poor man's saffron. Is this just coloring or is it flavor? No, it's flavoring and coloring. Oh, that looks and great. Without, I can't imagine cooking without it. How important are chilies to Mexican food? Oh, chilies are essentially the, the main building block to, to flavor the foods. And the history of drying the chilies started with the Aztecs, the Nahuatle. They would dry them to preserve them. This is an ancho, which when it's fresh, it's green. It looks like a, like a giant um, capsicum, like a green capsicum, uh, albeit more pointed. They're called poblanos when they're fresh. Okay, so they each have a different name, fresh and dried. Right, this is an ancho dried, poblano, fresh. If I were to use this in a dish, I would destem it. Right? And we take these seeds out, okay? They tend to burn rather quickly. Uh -huh. right? And this I would put in a little bit of hot oil and it puffs up and changes color. The heat of the oil releases the capsaicinoids. Mm. Capsaicinoids is the chemical that creates the tingling sensation mm. called heat. Then you start using it. Usually with a dry chili, they have to be simmered in hot water for a good 10 minutes and then they're malleable enough where you can cut them, puree them, dice them however you are. This one's a guajillo. This is a really fun chili because I love the color it takes on when it's put into the oil. This is a pasilla, and they have, again, a different flavor. They have a more angular, more pronounced. Uh, they're a little hotter. This is a, a chipotle, a dried chipotle. jalapeno, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now these, for example, we combine it with a tomatillo, and we make a tomatillo salsa that has a, a smoky flavor to it because of the chili. Uh, in Oaxaca, this doesn't smell like it's going to bite you. Oh, it's going to bite you. Oh, this one is. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Jamaica. Jamaica is hibiscus on that part of the world. And here it's called wild rosella, I think it is. Oh, yes, rosella flowers. There yeah. you go. And it's the national cold tea, as it were. 
Very high in vitamin C. Wow. So it's got a sort of tropical flavor? It's sort of a berry, well, hibiscus. Think mm. of a hibiscus iced tea, and that's exactly what it tastes like. That's nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm. Great with vodka. <laughs> Once a week at dawn, Mari Carmen, her husband Raymond and employee George fire up their imported tortilla maker to roll out tortillas for restaurants and the expatriate Mexican community. How important are tortillas to Mexican cooking? No tortillas, no cooking. Really? It's all about this. It really is. This is the centerpiece of every meal, including breakfast. So, so what's in this? Corn and water. Just ground corn and water. Ground corn. It's the original flatbread of Mexico. It is so And it's nice. so nutritious yeah. and so beautiful. Well, here we have the ubiquitous jalapeno. These are, these are rather large as jalapenos go. But uh, this is probably the most commonly found uh, chili and Mexican food. Over here we have habaneros. And habaneros are super, super hot and should be used judiciously. You can always test a, an avocado by its firmness. This one's ready, for example. Mm -hmm. You try that. Yep. Feel how it gives a bit, mm -hmm. you know? And you want to always hold them in your hand and, and not just press with, with two fingers, but rather you palm it. And we have here, this is known as the reed avocado in Australia. And I happen to love the reed avocado. It's, it's a bit, it's larger, it's very meaty. They have a fabulous, fabulous texture, very high in oil. Wow. You know? And so they're easy to work with, sometimes much easier than a haz. And lime you mentioned? Lime, absolutely. Without, without lime, you can't make guacamole. Mm. But lime is everywhere. This is called the jicama. And jicama is a sort of a crunchy, almost like an Asian pear yeah. in flavor. Yeah. And the most commonly found recipe for jicama is like a salad, again, with a little lime, a little chili, served in strips or in batonet. Delicious stuff. Mm. Coriander, mm. known as cilantro over there. And coriander is just about everywhere. Beans, salsas, stews. If you can only do with one herb, I would say do that one. because a lot of Australians know the name, but they don't know what mole it is. Mole means sauce. Guacamole, avocado sauce. Mole in Mexican cuisine is traditionally a sauce thickened with nuts, as a general rule. Mole is one of the well-known dishes. Tacos are a corn tortilla, beans, meat, salsa. Now, the corn tortilla is a soft corn tortilla. Not a hard, Not a hard shell? One. A soft one, like these right here. Uh-huh. See? Not this business where it goes flat. If they're not quite as soft, you could put them on the grill, mm. like that. So that just warms them through. And warms them right up, starts to steam. This is chicken Guerrero. It's been marinated with guajillo chili. OK. So we're going to slice some of this up thin. Another thing that tacos are is that tacos are done with grilled meats, not minced. That minced meat, you, you won't find that in Mexico. So it just won't. What does a Mexican do when confronted with minced meat on a taco? They know they're not in Mexico. Uh huh. Now, we have the tortilla here. I'm gonna put some little bit of bean on here. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of grilled chicken right here in the center. Let's put in a little bit of pico de gallo. That's but lovely. It, really, that is the essence of a taco right there. That's beautiful. Just hold it up like okay, that. Okay, hold it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. That, that is really it? good. That, taste that is really, really good. Oh. Tell me the rules of what's in a quesadilla and what's not in a quesadilla. Cheese, anything else you want. The cheese should be low fat, sort of low moisture cheese. Oh, low fat. Know. Thank you. And we're going to do one with black bean. Mm -hmm. 
and one with grilled mushrooms that have been sliced. They go on the grill, uh -huh. flip it over. Uh -huh. See how it starts getting a little yeah. golden there? We can choose whether we want them straight up or stirred or on the rocks. Or In other words, <laughs> what I mean is we can open the quesadilla and you can add a little bit of tomatillo. Or say you got a little bit of guacamole on the side and you're gonna put a little bit of guac in here. Just a pinch. Mm. Oh, yama. Mm -mm. What's a Mexican word you'd use to describe this? Mm -hmm. mm. Delicioso. Burritos need a flour tortilla, all right? And you mark them up just a bit. See the markings? Mm -hmm. It's called marking the tortilla. See when it starts to puff up like that? Uh huh. That's called the belly, la panza. The Let's belly. See. We're gonna put some cheese on here. Okay. And we're just gonna put in a nice little line of beans here. Now we're gonna take in and throw a little bit of rice. We're gonna put some meat in here with the onions, right? Wow. And now we're putting a salsa in. Now notice that there's a space on both sides. We need that there because we have to wrap this thing. And then you go like this. Oh, my heavens. And wow. That's wow. Now it goes on the grill. Ah. With a fold down because that'll seal it. Mm -hmm. The cheese makes it sort of retain the shape, melts into it, it just sort of steams towards the center. Yummy. And then this is what you see in the middle. Oh. See? Yum. Looks great. Shall we try it? Oh, toasty. Absolutely. Yummy. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really, really, really good. Isn't that fun? I love it. Is Mexican food an aphrodisiac? Yes, absolutely. Really? Every time I have it. Really? Yes. <laughs> Do you have it often? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Are we talking about the food? Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Lots of Mexican food. Really? Yeah. What's it do? Chilies hit your blood? It heats the body. And you know what's interesting? In Mexico, when you're horny, they say you're hot. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> Where are we going now? I don't know. I don't you know. Ask. But that's what they say.